the busy M1 motorway. What these drivers don't realise is that just over the hedge there are deer stalkers with full bore rifles managing Britain's deer herds, but they're doing it safely. Don't worry. The question is, why are there so many deer here in the first place? The answer lies here, Woburn Park, where in the 19th century, the Duke of Bedford populated his gorgeous 3,000 acre estate with deer, Chinese water deer, Pear Davids, Muntjac, and some of the ones we know well, Seeker, Reds, Fallow. But they got out. They moved to local farmland. And what we're going to do today is go out with top stalking agent Peter Carr to shoot a Chinese water deer. Peter, tell me something about this, um, this little deer. The Chinese water deer, it was introduced uh, by the Duke of Bedford, the 11th Duke of Bedford, mm -hmm. uh, in the 1930s to his deer park at Woburn Abbey. Uh, and also a population was introduced to Whipsnade. And uh, during the war years, story has it, that Woburn Park gates was left open and uh, there's a mass exodus of uh, the Chinese water deer and the muntjac and that's why we have a, a wild population today. Not a very popular move by whoever left the gates open then? No, no, I don't reckon if it was a, an NCO it would be busted down to private. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what have we got now? Muntjac have obviously spread all over the southeast of England. What, what, where are Chinese water deer, the, the deer we're after today? We get, obviously in Bedfordshire is the stronghold, but they're also in Cambridgeshire, uh, and there's a small population in Norfolk as well. Uh, and I think that was actually moved over from uh, introductions again from, from Woburn. Yeah, so where is the M1? Uh, the M1 is just on the edge of the field behind us where, where we see the Blackthorn Edge and you can actually see some buses and trucks going by there. Yeah. And you can also see little Chinese water deer. Little dots. That's, that's a big herd you've got out there. Yeah, there must be 20 in this field alone. So you can see the population here is quite high. How many do you take off this estate, this 1600 acre estate a year? Uh, well, through the shooting season off here, we'll probably take off between 60 and 80 off mm -hmm. this one estate, which is 1600 acres. Yeah, and that keeps the population healthy. Yeah, that's level. a nice balanced population, and, and the deer themselves are healthy. Okay, Pete, we've just seen you firing at a piece of paper. That's, that's not what we're here to do today. What, what were you up to? I oh, just take, uh, checking the zero, Charlie. Uh, obviously, we don't want a wounded deer situation, so we checked the zero. Uh, it was slightly to the left, so we, we brought it over and popped it right through the middle, so quite happy uh, with the zero of the rifle, so we can go and shoot a deer. We can now. Um, so you, you, saw the, you saw the bullet go into the left, and you wound the scope one way to... To bring it up to onto target, yeah. yeah. The, exactly. the elevation was fine, that up and down the elevation. The windage was just slightly to the left, so it two clicks over and it's spot on now. What makes the scope zero change? Is it is it changes in weather, that sort of thing? It, it can do, but with this particular rifle, uh, with it being stainless steel and a synthetic stock, there shouldn't be any change with wood or weather, or very minimal. So this is the particular way forward with this rifle really for that but it could have just had a little knock in the vehicle or anything oh. like that but it's always best to check before we actually go out. So last time you took it out it was bang on the money this yeah. time it was a little bit off but you've put it back right. Absolutely. Peter a um, very beautiful rifle an unusual caliber for deer the 22 250. Yes, uh, but for the Chinese water deer and the muntjac deer, it's been passed uh, last year, we can actually use that, and it's an ideal round for deer. It's very flat shooting for these small deer. Yeah. It wouldn't be any good on, on larger deer, such as fallow or red deer. It's a foxing calibre, isn't it? It is a foxing calibre, yes, but yeah. these small deer, it's the perfect calibre for that, and you are taking quite long-range shots at, at Chinese water deer. But not roe deer, not in England? No, it's not big enough for roe deer in England, but in Scotland it is, mm -hmm. not in England. Yeah. Um, and uh, tell me about this rifle itself. Yeah, it's a, a Seiko uh, 85, it's a, quite a modern rifle, it's stainless steel, uh, you've got rust problems, uh, off-road stock, so it's a plastic stock uh, as opposed to wooden stock, mm -hmm. so we shouldn't get any warping of the wood in adverse weather conditions. 
T8 moderator, yeah. which when we're taking a lot of deer out, it's great because the deer don't know where the, the, the muzzle report comes from. So that's, that's the Forestry Commission's favourite, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And we've got a, a Zeiss scope on there, very, very, very point variable, uh, which very, very good setup altogether for uh, shooting Chinese water deer in Muntjac. And the numbers on the scope, 3 to 12 by 56. And scopes, of course, are very, very important for, for deer stalking. What's the 3, the 12 and the 56 mean? Uh, obviously the ob object lens is... is that's, the, that's this bit at the end. That's Yeah, and the, and the variable is the, the power will, will go from 3 up to uh, 12 times. Okay, so uh, that's 56 yes, millimetres across. Lens, yes, yeah. and, and then the 3 to 12 magnification on the other end. Absolutely. Right, I'm yeah. with you. Water deer are particularly voracious on arable land. And that's one reason they need to be managed. Another reason, the managed populations do very well. Leave them alone and they die out. There's a couple out in the field. Pete's just spotted them. He's going to move through that hedge and see if he can get a shot. Pete sees an opportunity. He's gone through the undergrowth, but he can't get a clear shot. Now it's second time lucky, he's going to try and stalk this herd of Chinese water deer. It was quite a difficult stalk, Charlie, because we had to drop down behind the hill. That's, that's uh, right over there. Yeah, pretty much. The, the, we actually got in line with the deer before we actually approached the deer over the brow of the hill, but then we had to crawl in the last sort of 20 metres or so. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know if you noticed or not, but to the left, the book did see us, uh, a mature book, and he, he stood up and he was watching us. Yeah. So we had to just let him settle down and get comfortable before we could actually get in the last two or three yards for... Uh, the position to take the shot and you had that one running in the background was that did you spook that one as well yes right okay. yeah that's right and the wind's not perfect what can we something to just show the winds now like this it's, it's coming quite yeah. pretty well sideways on but nearly towards where you were coming from yeah we, we just were edging the wind and i think the, the, the book to the left and the door that actually ran yeah they just did pick a little bit of our wind i think it was eddying eddying a little because it just did get the back of my neck yeah eddie yeah. you don't want eddie when you're out stalking no no, no you don't need eddie <laughs> worst <Absolutely>. companion <laughs> well that's terrific and um tell me about the beast itself yeah it's a mature doe which is what we wanted to take out yeah uh, she's done a time uh, she's uh, in very, very good condition, so she'll make somebody a good meal, that, that, that's a fact. Well, that's good. And she's sitting amongst the crops she's been eating, so here's yes. the proof of why you need to do it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, they, they don't do as much damage to trees as other deer do, but the, the, the Chinese water deer actually damage root crops yeah. uh, and flower crops. They can damage them. Uh, and in high-density areas, then they do become a problem. And, of course, too many on the ground, it's, it's not good for the actual deer themselves yeah. from parasites' point of view, etc. Well, Peter Carr, here in glorious Bedfordshire, lovely, lovely spring day. You can hear the birds in the background. Thank you very much for taking us on this stalk. You're welcome.